please acknowledge that the speculative biology inside a McDonald's Cup series is a work of fiction. And for a mixture of creative liberties, previously unknown knowledge, mistakes and misunderstandings, and for the sake of storytelling, Spion fails to recognize many scientific rules of nature and biology. This is not a way to avoid judgment and criticism. Please criticize so I don't make the same mistakes, but this is simply an acknowledgement. In this episode, I will describe the four members of the Cellura family in detail. Starting with Multis Cele. Multis is the largest Cellura member alive and dead, at least until it's a mutador. Multis Cele is strictly an herbivore, eating mostly the leaves of plants like Triplex Caul and Lapis Folium, occasionally eating the seeds of Veritas Grani. Multis, like the other three in this family, is very slow and often hides in the forests of Microlignum and Lapis Folium. Multus has 36 claws, and yet none of them are strong enough to defend Multus from any of its predators. Multus relies entirely on two things as a defense, one being its camouflage to not be seen by its predators, although only Lata Otis can see, so the effectiveness of this is limited. Although the environment it lives in lacks many Kayaka chasers, due to their blindness they often run into trees and get their jaws stuck on stems. Although when they get noticed by either Lata Otis or Prestrictus, Multis Cele will wave its arms in a mesmerizing pattern and slowly move backward. This move often does not work, for Prestrictus uses Multis' heat to find them and is blind. Lata Otis often just doesn't care for this move, just persisting, and as it evolved, this attempt at defense would stop. Multus can hear and smell, having tiny ear holes in the same as Magnus Dens has organs in the mouth for smelling. To reproduce, Multus has a similar mating ritual to the Natantids, requiring the males to inseminate the females via the mouth, often filling a claw with sperm and food to feed the female. Cellura members are ovoviviparous, meaning that the eggs are ready to hatch after being laid. These eggs are quite small and almost immediately hatch. The parents don't stay with their eggs or children. The children, being as small as they are, can go undetected for quite some time. But these kids grow incredibly fast. In fact, Salira has some of the fastest growing children of either cup, only being beaten by the false plants and Opacus and Rero Radiolus. It takes only five months for a Multus baby to grow into a full-sized adult eating constantly throughout the five months. The babies also have a wider variety of things they eat just to grow as fast as they do. The major killer for these babies is Praestrictus, silently floating towards them and eating them. The next member of Cellura to talk about is Hyalus Oculi, who would not survive the connection extinction event. Hyalus Oculi is different in two major ways, one being the lack of claws or pincers, instead the arms just end. And two is that Hyalus has four large eyes, greatly enhancing its ability to find food and avoid becoming it. Hyalus, before the connection, was still on the brink of extinction due to 1. its inability to defend itself from predation, and 2. their bright colors to attract mates, which attract predators as well. This was only amplified with the introduction of Grissa Oculus. And 3. being that Hyalus only had two food sources its weak jaws could eat, those being Kayla Muscus and Alsoni Mortua. And with Alsoni Mortua also closing in on extinction, Hyalus almost exclusively ate muscus, typically while they were young. Hyalus mate the same as Multis Chele, but growing up is a different story. Mothers and fathers will stay with their children, and for the first month of growth, the parents will take turns getting food for their kids. The parents eat almost nothing, essentially going on a month-long fast. After a month, the kids leave on their own and bounce between cave entrance to cave entrance, looking for a place to live. Most Hyaluses live in entrances to caves or in small inlets. If not, they live in heavily forested areas and only leave to find more food. Next in Cellura history is Minor Sella from the 80s Cup. Minor Sella is the smallest of Cellura and is the only member residing in the 80s Cup. 
Minorcella's diet consists mostly of Arium folium and Multus folium. Sella uses its arms like scythes to cut the plants, starting from the top and working their way down. To get a Cerulum folium fruit, they have to wait until they eventually fall to the ground. Because Sella is the closest relative to Hylaeus, it too has eyes, except it has six instead of four. Sella also has significantly less arms than Hyalus. Sella's biggest predator is Validus valiga, rarely being hunted by Grissa and never really being killed by Immator thanks to its vision. Thanks to the timid nature of the 80s cub, Sella has the ability to have very few kids, only having 2 to 3 eggs instead of the 6 to 7 of Hyalus or the 10 to 12 of Multus Celle. The last species of this family is Arcus cellula. Arcus cellula is the oddball of this family. Arcus is a link between Cellura and their closest relatives, Fisturidae. Arcus, like Fisturidae, is blind in a terrestrial filter feeder. Arcus's claws are even more shaped like Fisturidae's than either Multus or Sella. Arcus, like Gigant's Fister, is capable of producing a pheromone for the blind to distinguish Arcus from other species. Arcus also has rainbow skin, and inside that skin are hundreds of small pores filled with poison. This poison, if ingested, causes stomach pains and sluggishness. Arcus is the most aggressive of Cellura, matching more the aggression of Admus Fister. Arcus will attack anything that it thinks is a threat. This includes anything other than Arcus, Multus Cele, or Hyalus Oculi. But just like Fistiridae, Arcus has no sense of sight or hearing. To sense any possible danger, the side pickaxe-looking arms of Arcus can sense even the smallest change in temperature. These are also where they release their pheromones. But unlike Fistiridae, Arcus can also smell, and this is how they recognize individual species. Just like Fistiridae, Arcus uses asexual reproduction, starting as a growth on the back of Arcus that eventually pinches off after growing its skeleton and organs. And due to the structure of reproduction, Arcus has a far better ability to regenerate than other cellular members or animals in general, due to the high amount of stem cells in their body. Arcus would not survive the connection extinction event, being killed by a mix of Validus valga, Grissa oculus, and the biggest contributor, Admus Fister. And that's all for Celliera from the speculative biology inside a McDonald's cup.